<laughs> well, welcome back, my fantastic artistic friends, to Painting with Master Temple. Now, today is a very simple day. We've got a, a little bit of a basic painting going on. And if you have never painted before, this is the one for you. We're just going to use one paint brush and one paint colour, OK, on this little tiny canvas up here. It's a little spare canvas I had lying about. It's 12 inch by 8. It's completely dry, so we'll go through all the all the things that we need to do to, to make a little nice simple little masterpiece and I'm sure you'll enjoy this one if you've never painted before please give this one a go you'll you'll enjoy the results so let's have a look at some of the equipment that we'll be using in today's painting this is this is the guts basically of of the paint station that I have now the first thing that we're gonna gonna look at is the liquid white and uh, this is the stuff Bob Ross liquid white oil paint it's very very thin give it a good shake before applying it onto your to your canvas okay so we'll use that all right now we will use the palette knife now this is the small palette knife and it's seen some action it's painted well over 2000 paintings and a very good friend got me that for my 40th birthday a while back we've got a script liner brush we may use it may not but we only said one brush so this is the brush i'm going to be using okay it is a, a filbert brush it's just got synthetic bristles on there and uh <laughs> if all goes well, this will pay dividends having one of these kind of brushes in your in your painting arsenal. Okay, we've got some paper towels down as well, as always. Now let's show you the, the cleaner that we use, okay? Okay, so just down here is where I keep the paint thinner, the paint cleaner, okay? And a little bit of a bucket, and if you can see the grid that's just down there, that's so we can take our dirty paintbrush and give it a bit of a scrub against there that agitates all the paint we just scrape off the excess and then we can beat it up if it's a big brush if not we just dry it on a paper towel it's this stuff it's it's premium low odor white spirit okay doesn't smell and uh, it cleans your brushes right then we've got a big palette all right so this is a big palette okay you've seen this on majority of my painting videos uh, it's nice and dry. Okay, let's choose some paint. So for that, let's go into the paint drawer. So let's have a look at all these tubs of paint. Okay, so we've got all colours. Now this painting will work with any colour, like a liz and crimson. It'll it'll work with browns. I've done a brown version of this. <laughs> you know, raw sienna will work quite well. We've got some Bob Ross paint in there. Um, what's this one? This one's Prussian blue, but I think today we'll go for French ultramarine. Okay, these are Windsor and Newton's Winton colour oil paints, so we'll crack on with that. Okay, we'll use French ultramarine. So where we go, so we've got the French ultramarine there, the Winton oil colour from the series one. Okay, so we're just going to squeeze out a bit. Now just put a little bit out, that's all you need. Just to put a little tiny bit, just like that. No more than that. You can always add more, but uh, okay. So that's all we need out. Just just a little bit of uh, of oil paint. Don't put loads and loads on. I know sometimes when you see like Bob Ross and he's got a massive amount on the on the palette, even on myself, you know, on some of the videos I've done, I've got a lot out. But if you're not using a lot in one sitting. It can be quite expensive and these paints are quite expensive what's also quite a good thing to do is if you take a palette knife clean dry palette knife and just pull that out nice and flat okay and then you can just dip into this with your paintbrush rather than going into the big full full wad of uh, of paint and at the end of the session if all this is mixed up maybe you've got some whites and browns in there whatever color greens perhaps just scrape it off okay Get rid of that dirty paint and you're away to go again. Okay. Okay, so we've got a dry canvas up there. So first things first, let's coat it in some liquid white. Now I did say we're going to be using one brush, so that's all we're going to do. So I'm going to dip this into some liquid white. Okay, and I'm just going to start up here. I'm just going to coat the whole thing. Just coat the whole of the canvas. Now some canvases like this one, I've got a slight grey tinned to them so you can see where you're painting but it is some some gesso canvases are quite 
white as you buy them so it is quite hard to see but and this little brush possibly not the best brush to coat your canvas in but it's it's all right it's only a small canvas so we'll just coat the whole thing okay in various areas just place it all over okay really smush this white paint into there so that's the liquid white all on now if you've got a big brush it only takes a few seconds to do that but we haven't we've only got this little one okay so liquid white all over the canvas top to toe back to front just like that okay make sure it's all in the grain everywhere okay once that's done that's good stuff i'm just gonna wipe. there we go so the canvas is coated completely top to toe with liquid white we're, we're happy at that okay nice even distribution of liquid white now if we take our palette knife make sure it's clean and dry a bit of blue paint left on there okay i can scrape across if we get no paint on the palette knife that's how much liquid white we've got the perfect amount on the camera should we say okay let's swill the brush off so again just wash that in a little bit of odorless paint thinner against that screen and then you can't really i try and beat it against something but <laughs> it don't really work okay so let's let's go into some of that french ultramarine now i'm going to load both sides of the paintbrush up nicely okay and then i'm going to start up here and just put some wisps in just come all the way across okay this is just one color and obviously the liquid white okay like i said before in the intro you could do this with any color magenta is a very nice color and also is so is the indian yellow okay and the browns make a good sepia color as well wipe the brush we don't want to take that white into our blue paint okay and then we'll just put a little bit more keep it stronger up in the corners and then just pull in one direction just like this a few wispy things just like that how easy is that there i'm gonna make it stronger just grab a bit more of the strong paint and just work on tone blend that just like so the more we blend the paler it'll become and there we have it not bad little sky so wash the brush one more time and then beat it dry it okay and then what we're going to do that's clean and dry now we're just going to start where the white parts are because that's going to be the palest part of the sky and just go all, all the way along again you could if you've got more than one brush you could do this you've seen me do that plenty of times you've seen other artists do that lots of times okay but for the purpose of this exercise it's just one brush one color okay so that's that for the sky so let's let's work on some mountains some little hills now people say they can't paint hills they can't paint mountains that's baloney <laughs> as some of my american friends would say of course we can so again i've just loaded the paintbrush same color all right now let's start there and then just paint wobble come around and wobble up and wobble maybe another bump there just wobble it okay and that's all we need to do we've got a basic outline of a big mountain or a big hill something along those lines all right now you need to decide where the highlight and shadow is going to be and it's going to be easy with this because all we're going to do is pull on one side more vigorously than we would on the other okay so all we do is just blend out these colors easy to do because we're just using the same brush okay just fill that up fill it up just blend that down okay wipe off the excess now i'm going to get some more of that stronger paint 
And this side looks a bit more naturally to be in the shadow. So just with a bit of a stronger paint, we'll put some stronger accents of colour there. Get that little mosquito out of the way. Okay, keep doing that. Maybe on this one, it's got a bit of an accent of colour. A bit more colour there. Maybe it bleeds over. We don't know. We don't know. And then there as well. Just like that. Nice and strong. There we go. Anywhere where we think should be a little bit of a shadow, that's where we'll put it. Okay, once again, because we don't want to take that white paint into the pure colour. So we'll feed the brush and then dry it against the paper towel. Easy peasy. Okay, and once again, down at the base, we're just going to blend upwards. Okay, just blend upwards. And then just gently and lightly just grab some of this. Don't distort the top edge. Okay. Just just gently bleed it over. Wherever we think it should live. You know that's where it should be. Just like that. There. And we've got very nice looking distant little hill. Okay. That easy. That easy to produce. Okay, now there's a trick. Let's load some more of that colour on. We could get some of this colour here. Uh, sorry, this looks like a natural place to put another little peak there. And just go like that. Okay, that just screamed out to me. So we could live with that, we could work with that. All right, another little, little bit of a peninsula there. Okay, wipe off the excess. Okay, this is why you need a lot of paper towels because uh, constantly wiping the brush. Okay, again, load the brush, both sides full of this French ultramarine. Okay, and we're going to go mm, there. We'll stay there. Okay, and just tap. Just tap, 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 tap. Now, if you haven't got one of these filbert kind of brushes, you could quite easily do this with a with a, a fan brush. If you've got a big canvas and you want to do this, you could do it with a one inch paint brush or the, the round of any kind of brush. Just just make use of it. Make friends with anything that you've got. All the equipment, just make friends with. There, and then down. Leave a couple of white spots, then just keep tapping. Okay, just keep tapping. There we go. All right, again, I'm gonna wash the brush. Wash that paintbrush out. Okay, knock it off, beat it up, and dry. Okay, again, where this, where this two colors meet, just tap and blend, tap and blend. Okay, we'll just tap this time, just create a bit of a misty area. That liquid white already on the canvas will create this for us. And we don't really have to work that hard. It's all done for us, just like that. So we've got a couple of bills and we've got a bit of foreground, middle ground, should I say. We've got a couple of bills and a bit of middle ground. Okay, let's put some water into this. Okay, so again, get that French ultramarine on the brush. Okay, and let's... Let's put some water, so here, pull straight down, straight down, straight down, okay. So I'm leaving a bit of a gap, but I'm pulling straight down. Straight down, there, there, there. Okay, I'll pick up some of that liquid white. That's already on the paint, on the painting. There, just pull down. Just there, pull down, like that, easy, easy peasy. Knock off the excess, again, just on a paper towel. You could clean the brush if you wish, but we'll just do it on a paper towel. Okay, so there's the lightest amount of paint still in there, but that's all right, because we're just gonna go gently across all this, gently across the, all that. And that will give a nice indication of some watery reflections way out there right we did say we're going to use the 
palette knife. So let's get some liquid white on the go. Okay, I'm just going to take that liquid white on the edge of the palette knife and we're just going to cut in a nice waterline. So we get right on the edge of the knife is the paint parallel to the base and just let's cut in where that water should live. Okay, we'll have it there like that. Maybe it comes a little bit towards us on the edges, just there maybe. Uh, maybe it's going away from us up here. Looks like it, doesn't it? It looks like it. Just a couple of little faint water lines. Just scrub them in. Really push, 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 push. There, like so. Maybe we've got one or two that are just lurking out here where the old where the old trout's jumped out, the old pike, whatever we're fishing for that day. There, like that. Okay, now then, so we've got as nice little water lines in there, we've got as nice reflection, we've got a big hill, we haven't used any effort at all. Okay, let's get some more of that blue. So again, back into the blue, back with the filbert brush. Okay, minimal equipment we're using. Minimal equipment. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is tap on there and lift up slightly. Lift up, lift up, lift up. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe we'll zoom in a little bit. But tap on and lift up. Okay, lift up. Create some little weeds that live down here in the water. Okay, just lift up there like that. A few little weeds. Maybe, maybe there's another one up here as well. Some more weeds. I've done this in brown before in the sepia colour of, uh, of Van Dyke Brown and it really worked well. In fact, I even put a fisherman, I think, in the water. And plenty of you have liked that in the past. So that's why I thought we'd do it again. Okay, just there. These are little reeds uh, are living out in the water. Okay. What I'm going to do now is just do that on the underside, okay? We'll just pull straight down. Leave a little bit of lightness between the two, but pull straight down. Okay, it doesn't matter if you go a little bit crazy on this. Just as long as they come straight down and are usually about the same height as what they are above the waterline. Usually. That all depends on angles and where you stood and how you're looking at it, but... There we go. So now, before we clean the brush and set those reflections into the water, what we're going to do is we're going to use the brush sideways on. So again, same technique, just load the paint into the brush. Okay, and then we're going to hit on sideways on. Okay, so we're just going to go sideways on, just like that. Okay, and this will give a nice indication of some reeds a little bit stronger and a fake a facing inwards okay these have grown up a little bit more stronger okay so just by using the pure color reloading the brush when you need to we've got some stronger looking reeds there there don't make them all the same size either that's a nice a nice habit sometimes of trying to make them all the same size don't do it they grow at different speeds in the wild, the, the water reeds, I'm sure of it. Okay, okay. so above the water and then below the water in the reflections. Now, you don't have to get each one exact. Just just give it wherever it, above the water is. So it's just a sideways tap, just a sideways tap. There, like so. Okay, maybe we'll have one or two on the far bank on this side as well. So not many, so we'll just come up there and then just tap, tap, tap. Okay, just a lighter touch, that's all. That's all we use. Nothing different, just a lighter touch. Okay, maybe a bit more in there. And there. Okay, and then below. Again, so if we've got three there, we'll need three below. And then there, and there, and there. Just like that. Easy peasy. All right, if you've never painted before, you can do this one. Okay, right then. 
Let's wash the brush, dry it, okay. Make sure it's dry and then just let's start up in here and then just gently pull those down. Just gently, very lightly, delicate touch. Pull straight down, pull straight down, very gently. Okay, knock off the excess and then gently go across. Gently go across all that lot. Just breeze over it. Just breeze. There. There. Okay, let's go back to the palette knife. Okay, get some of that liquid white. Now let's go there. Okay, let's put in a nice little waterline. We've basically got as area where we need to put the waterline because we left a little bit of a blank space, didn't we? Okay, and then there, like so, and then maybe on this one, so put the put the point of the knife onto where we want to start, and then sit the knife down, and then just scrape in. Scrape it in. There we go. There, like so, and it comes round there. Very easy, very simple, very straightforward. Just like that. A couple more little water lines out here, there and everywhere. And I think we've about got done a finished painting. <laughs> well, I did tell you this one would be simple and straightforward. And if you've never painted before, I'm sure you could do this one. Just follow these few simple tips and techniques. But if you've enjoyed this one, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And leave me a nice big comment. Until next time, take care of yourself. Stay safe. Happy days. I'll see you later.